Hey everybody, this is Tom, otherwise known as Scary Spikes, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. In today's video, I'll be telling you everything that you need to know about the 325A from Origin Jumpworks, their 300 series fighter craft. But before we get started, a very quick and special thank you to Roland AC, or Roland as he's known on our Discord. He's been incredibly active, helpful, fun to play with, and extremely generous in our stream helping to support our community, the stream itself, and of course me as I'm uh, doing this basically full time now. So Roland, thank you so very much for being such a productive and uh, helpful member of our community, as well as for being a VIP Gold contributor. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that we do stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays over on Twitch, so we'd love it if you joined us there, as well as our Discord community at discord.io forward slash sspgaming. Links for those can be found down below, and we'd love to see you there very soon. Also, if this video is helpful, please make sure to let me know by leaving a like, subscribing if you're new, and ringing the bell so that you don't miss a video in the future, because I post videos weekly. Without further ado, let's get into this video. This is the 325A. It is Origin Jumpworks dedicated fighter craft out of the 300 line of ships. Of course, in that line, we also have the 300I, which is the base model, the 315P, which is the Pathfinder or Exploration model, and then of course, the 350R, which is the racing model. All of those are available on the website pretty much all the time with the exception of the 350R, but the 350R is available for purchase with Alpha UEC in the game. Now, looking at this ship, it definitely has a very aggressive look, and being the fighter variant, it also has the best missile and gun loadout of all the 300 series ships. It also, stock at least, has this really nice 1980s Nintendo paint job with the dark grey and red. Let's have a look at the exterior of the ship first, followed by an interior tour, and then we'll jump into Oracle.Games, where I'll share with you how I would load out the ship. If you have any tips for loadouts yourself, make sure to leave those in the comments below. The first thing that sticks out at us, literally, is this M6A cannon. This thing is absolutely huge, giggity, and it also is a size 4 fixed laser cannon. We will be replacing this, but it's definitely not a bad cannon to start out with. It does a pretty good amount of damage and it's got a pretty decent amount of range. It doesn't overheat too easily. When we move over to the wings, we'll see a symmetrical setup on both the port and the starboard side with these shredder repeaters, as well as a pair of Dominator 2 missiles, which flank both wingtips. Moving over to the starboard side of the ship here, we can see again the same shredder repeater. We'll be replacing these as well, so make sure to stay tuned for that, as well as the two size 2 Dominator missiles. It should be said that under the belly of the beast here, we also do have a compartment that houses uh, four size three arrestor missiles, and uh, those can also be changed out for different types of missiles, as can the dominators. But again, we'll look into that right after the interior tour coming up next. You'll need to take a ladder up to the ship as these ships unfortunately don't have any kinds of ramps, but that's okay. Once we get into the ship, we can see that it has some beautiful interior design, something that Origin has been known for throughout the entire history of, well, however long they've been making spaceships. Starting at the back of the ship here though, we can see that we have some beautiful accent lighting in the back which is lighting our closet here, which we'll be able to store some things in, as well as a gun rack, which doubles as a pistol rack as well, being able to hold uh, some pistols as well as a couple of rifle style weapons. And then of course we have our champagne and wine glasses, which unfortunately are not paired with a complimentary bottle in the fridge. And with this price tag, I would certainly hope that Origin would throw one in, but I digress. Let's move over to the kitchenette area here. And as you can see, it's quite bare. I will go over the details of that in just a little bit, but we can see some beautiful red accents here, coupled by the white LED strips and a really nice touch with this Origin logo in the back. We do of course have the sink and the refrigerator, and without the complimentary champagne, no, I will not let that go. And of course the beautiful blue lighting flanking the panoramic ceiling here, which allows uh, pretty much all the light to come through and us to be able to see outside of it. This is all glass up here and it continues all the way to the cockpit at the front of the ship. 
Now, having a look over here, we do also have that beautiful origin design. It seems like they don't want us to forget whose ship we're in. And we also have what looks like a very comfortable bed that's capable of sleeping one adult comfortably or two adults slightly less comfortably, giggity, with some nice white LED night lights flanking the foot of the bed. We also have a similar blue lighting on the floor here, which continues from about the mid deck all the way down these uh, little stairs here on which we also see these really nice little LED night lights. And then of course we have on the starboard side of the ship here, a lavatory that we can use. Just go ahead and close that. And of course we also have a fire extinguisher just there. This is the door and uh, this actually looks really cool. I love the red accents on it as well. And uh, we should also note that you don't need to take the ladder on the way down like you do on the way up. You can simply just jump out of the door and you're good to go. So that's one of the positive things about this particular ship. Now moving to the front of the ship, we can definitely see some really nice touches and we might need to turn on the torch here just to be able to get a better idea. Uh, but man, this is just absolutely amazing. You've got this beautiful leather here with the Origin logo stitched into it. Very, very comfortable seat. And of course, we could expect nothing less from Origin Jumpworks being a luxury brand. If we take a seat, though, we'll be able to see something else that Origin is known for, and that is the holographic MFDs. So looking around, we can see that we have a number of different MFDs available here. We have a couple of screens flanking the sides here, uh, which unfortunately do not have any capacitive touch capability as of yet. So we just do have these text menus that appear when we hover over them, but it looks like they are linked to them. So it's kind of nice that they're uh, they're linked to those displays. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to interact just with the displays and kind of get rid of these messy looking text placeholders. That being said, I really, really like a few things about Origin ships. And one is that they're just very clean looking. So as you can see here, we have four MFDs as well as our heads up display. It's just very easy to see. Uh, it's not as easy to see when it's very bright. As we can see here, the uh, sun is setting on Aberdeen where we currently are. So it makes things a little bit more contrasty. But in any case, it's just really nice to have that light blue. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And in the pitch black, the void of space, it's pretty noticeable and easy to see. One of the other things that I like here is that we do get four MFDs, which is quite nice for a ship of this size. And one of the hallmarks of Origin, which is this customizable radar here that you can change the resolution of as well as a few other settings. It's just really cool to be able to have that. And of course, we still have that nice attention to detail with the Origin branding on the yoke, as well as some nice red accents uh, as the rest of the ship has. Now, one thing that a lot of folks might not know, especially if you're a new player in Star Citizen, is that if you purchase this ship or any of the 300 line of ships, you can actually completely customize them on the RSI website. That includes the trim, the paint job, the yoke, the seat, and even the armaments. Although I would recommend that if you're going to take this step, please do not spend real money on guns. Guns can be purchased in the game for Alpha UEC, and there's no reason why you should be spending 18 to 22 US dollars for new guns. It just doesn't make any sense because you can spend literally pennies worth of Alpha UEC and get the same thing. Just spend it on decorating the ship the way that you like. And of course, you can also get things like coffee makers, sound systems, food makers, and other things that will eventually appear here on the kitchenette. With that being said, let's take a look at the Urkel stats and of course the loadout that I would recommend for the ship. If you have your own recommendations, please make sure to link those in the comments below. Okay, so here we are at Urkel.Games. Just to remind you, I will be leaving links for the stock build as well as my recommendations for upgrading it down in the description below. And if you have any of your own, please make sure to share those in the comments. Thanks. Before we get started with the recommendations, let's take a look at the stock build and you can stop the video here for a moment while you have a look at all the stats. We have 1,414 DPS on the pilot controlled weapons as well as 779 alpha damage. For the missiles, we have 32,418 damage in total. Now for the stock weapons here, we do have all fixed weapons. If you are a little bit confused about the difference between fixed and gimbaled weapons, make sure to watch the video in the top right hand corner of the screen to learn a little bit more about that. But I digress. Let's move on. So you can choose whether you want your weapons to be fixed or gimbaled. If you're rather new to the game, I would recommend starting out with gimbaled weapons as they do give you an aim assist. But the downside to that is that you have to choose weapons that are one size smaller. 
Whereas if you go with fixed weapons, yes, you do have to do a little bit more work to aim them and it does take a little bit more skill, but at least you'll be doing quite a bit more damage and uh, that's always a great thing when you're in a fighter. So my recommendations will be as follows, but there are a couple of honorable mentions that we'll go over as soon as we pick all the weapons. First, for the size for fixed weapon, I would definitely go with the 447 Rhino Laser Repeater. The reason for this is because it's got a great range, it's got a good amount of damage and alpha damage to it, um, but also it doesn't overheat very easily so that you can uh, overclock it and you won't have too many issues with it. And uh, also it does pretty good amounts of damage without ever running out of ammo. This is especially useful for people who are newer to the game and of course even those veterans will be able to benefit from the power of the CF447 Rhino Laser Repeater which has been known to be one of the best laser repeaters in the game. Aside from the attritions, but well, we'll get into that. The fixed size 3 weapons, we're going to go ahead and choose the CF337 Panther Laser Repeater again. I really like these. They are a very good middle of the road weapon. Uh, they don't overheat easily. They have a great range at about 3.2 to 3.5 kilometers, depending on how fast you're going. And uh, they do a pretty decent amount of damage. Of course, our alpha damage did go down a little bit, but our DPS went up. So you might want to choose different weapons based on your particular situation. But these are the weapons that I will choose for my loadout. Now, for some honorable mentions, I could definitely recommend a Gatling over here. So if we go to the Ballistic Gatling, we have the Revenant. Uh, that will give us a little bit more DPS, a little bit less alpha damage. Uh, the problem with this is even though it is effective uh, at hitting shields at 50% and the hull at 50%, unfortunately, it runs out of ammo really, really fast. If you are an advanced player and you know how to manage your ammo or how much you need to shoot at a particular target to make it go boom, then this is not too bad and it will do a decent amount of DPS. However, I would really strongly recommend to not go with a Revenant on this ship just because you really will go through and chew through ammo so quickly. It's ridiculous and you don't want to have to interrupt your bounty hunting missions or whatever else you happen to be doing just to go get ammo. Now, the other runner up would be the other repeater that we have here, which is the Attrition 4. The Attrition 4 definitely does quite a bit more damage, as you can see here. Unfortunately, the range on these is quite a bit less, and they do have quite a bit of a damage fall off as well. The only other thing with these is that they need to be constantly hot in order to be delivering their peak damage. The problem with that is that smaller ships don't have good enough or big enough, I should say, coolers. And the coolers are really not fully implemented to work correctly in the game anyway. So the issue with running attrition 4s or 3s or anything smaller than that uh, is that, you know, smaller ships just don't have the cooling capacity to keep these running at an efficient speed or uh, to keep them running at an efficient rate rather so you'll have pretty decent dps with burst fire at short ranges but beyond that you're gonna have to wait for your ship to cool them down again and uh, that just doesn't work for me i really would prefer something that i can overclock or that i don't even have to overclock and it will just continue to deliver dps on a consistently good basis so for that reason i'm going to go ahead and switch this back to the rhino of course you can go ahead and change that uh, to your liking Moving on to the missiles, we will remove a little bit of damage from the missiles here as well overall, uh, but we will increase our range quite a bit. So I don't mind having uh, size 2 missiles on this kind of ship or on this size of ship. And if you want to have size 2 missiles, I would really highly recommend the Strike Force. These are cross-section missiles. They do a little bit less damage than Dominators, but they are really, really good. They lock really fast. They have a 3 kilometer lock range and they track really, really well locking on to the opposing ship's cross-section as opposed to the EM or IR of other comparable missiles. But in my opinion, I would actually change out these racks to the 313 racks. If you don't know what these mean, by the way, there is a video linked in the top right hand corner of the screen for you right now to teach you all about ship components and what these actually mean, because they do have a meaning to them. That being said, I, I'm more of a long range fighter, so that's why I like having the Panther as well as the Rhino laser repeaters. So in that style, I'm also going to put in some missiles that have a better range and higher damage. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my Thunderbolts here. And then for the five or the 143 rather, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to the Thunderbolts as well. Now, our damage overall is a little bit lower because we have fewer of the smaller missiles, but our range is really, really good. We have a really go a good lock on range and we're able to shoot from much further away than the size twos, which gives us a little bit more protection, so to speak. It gives us a little bit more leeway between us 
and the target. And if they get a little too close, then we can handle them with the lasers that are on board. And moving on to the shields, and these are, by the way, all size ones. And the sizes is something that we cannot change, but we can change the types of shields and other components that we have. So they all stops. So we're going to go ahead and change that. Uh, one of them will be an FR-66 and the other one will be an FR-66 as well. On smaller ships, the FR-66s or any shield that has a really high regen rate are preferable just because once you lose your, sh your shields, you're pretty much screwed. The these ships don't have a lot of hull HP um, or any of the small ships really. So you want a shield that regenerates quickly so that you can stay in the fight longer. If you're able to do some evasive maneuvers and dodge some fire coming in, these shields can regenerate very quickly and you can get back in the fight right away. Whereas if you have shields that don't regenerate as quickly but have a larger pool, it's great to have it. But when it runs out, you're not going to be getting it back anywhere sooner than these. And so for that reason, I would recommend the FR-66s. Alternatively, you can also change one of them to the Palisade, which definitely has a bigger shield pool, but it doesn't regenerate nearly as fast. It depends on what you're doing. I feel like a Palisade and FR-66 is a relatively balanced build, but for my playstyle, I'm going to go ahead and choose the FR-66 as both my shields. There's a lot of questions with regards to the Sukaran shields, and to be honest, I would not recommend the Sukaran shields for size 1. For size 2, those are literally the best shields in the game, and they're 100% resistant to ballistic damage, which is absolutely insane, and I'm not sure if this is something that will change in the future. But for size 1s, I would recommend these two shields here, either the two FR-66s or one Palisade and one FR-66. With the power plants, we're going to go ahead and change that as well. We're going to go with the uh, JS300. If you know me already by now, you know that I love the JS series of power plants. They deliver power very quickly, a good amount of power that is. And also they're just a staple in pretty much every ship that I use. They're just fantastic. They're reliable and they do a great job. So no fuss, no muss there with the power supply. Definitely going to go with the JS series. For the coolers, we're going to go ahead and change that as well. And we're going to go with the glaciers. I feel like the glaciers are quite good. I use them pretty much on every small ship that I have. You could go with the ultra flows. They're pretty decent as well. But honestly, I would stick with the glaciers. I've found that they have a pretty good cooling rate and uh, they keep all of my systems nice and frosty. Okay, now moving on to quantum drives. The beacon is not too bad. It's a low grade military class quantum drive, but we're going to go ahead and change that over. And there are a few options. First of all, if you're looking for a great quantum drive, that's a middle of the road one and does a good job at just about everything, gets you there relatively quickly, as well as doesn't burn a whole lot of fuel, then I would really recommend the Atlas. There's nothing much better than the Atlas with regards to fuel economy, long range, and also pretty decent speed. If you're looking for speed only, especially within a subsystem like Crusader, Arc Corp, Hurston, or Microtech, for example, then you'll want to go with the Stealth Drive. I know this seems a little bit weird, but the Spectre actually has some of the best short range acceleration of all the drives around. And so if you're doing a lot of bounty hunting, like you might be doing in a 325A, this would definitely help you as it will take you from one location to another in a relatively short range in a short amount of time, doing so very, very quickly and without burning too much fuel. Unfortunately, we don't have any other options for these down here with the uh, sensors uh, as well as the radar. And hopefully this is something that will be available in a future build. But that is the 325A. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if you have your own builds, please make sure to share those down below. Check us out over at sspgaming.com if you'd like to pick yourself up some fancy merch and help support myself and the channel and the community as a whole. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like to let me know, subscribe if you're new, and ring the bell so that you never miss a video in the future. That's going to do it for me. Thank you again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.